I'm going to show you a way to make a crazy amount of gold per hour in Dragon's Dogma 2, and you can start doing this early game. And even like mid game, it's still probably the best way I've found to just farm gold. So what we're going to do is go to the uh, capital of Vernworth, and from here we're going to need to go to a certain place. But first, we need to do a few things. So first thing you want to know about is up here is the inn. If you don't know about storage yet, if you're actually really new, uh, you can talk to the innkeeper here, and you can have a storage here, and you can deposit. Now, what I would recommend for this is just deposit everything that you don't need, other than a few salubrious draughts as healing items, or some roborants or something. Uh, just need to put away pretty much everything except for healing items, and then take, you know, but you don't want to carry too much. You want to keep your inventory as light as is reasonably possible. And then you're going to want to do the same thing to your pawns as well once you're done with this. Next up, when you head out of the inn... There's the pawn rift right here. If you haven't been there, go there. And go yeah. ahead and make sure you have four pawns, which you probably already have four pawns. So wrong inventory. Um, but then for the pawns, I mean, really, I, it's probably just warriors and uh, warriors and berserkers, whatever they're called, uh, would probably be your best bet. Maybe one mage for healing or something. But really, it's more about how can you just quickly kill enemies that are really close to you rather than sniping enemies from a distance or anything like that. Or you just run whatever party you want. Main thing is just get your four pawns of your choice that you think can kill close range things as fast as possible. Now what we gotta do is gotta do some prep here. So there's something we do right now, and then later on after the first run when you have money, then there's something else we're gonna do instead to say make it even more efficient. So there's Filbert's Sundries over here in Vernworth. So over here there's three shops. He's the one on the left. You're gonna talk to this guy, and you're gonna buy. And you're gonna go down here, and he has mundane camping kits. So you're going to buy all three of these. Oh, you're here, right? Now, if you don't have money, I just go out, collect a few things, kill a few enemies, so and bring, you know, if at least get three of these for your first run if you don't have any money. If you have money, get more than three. And then after the first run or two, you'll have enough money to get like 10 or 20 on each one. So what you're going to do is you're going to distribute these to other um, your other pawns. And then... If they, you want to do it till they're all probably you probably can just do it till they're all heavy on weight, honestly. So what you do now is you go back up here. There's a bench over here. You're going to sit at this bench and you're going to doze off. There's a button at the bottom right. It's Y or triangle or whatever it is on PC. It'll say the bottom right probably. So you're going to wait till you go all the way through a night and into the next day like that. And now we're going to head down to this place again. And normally at least he refreshes his stock every single day so we go in here oh he only had one more today so didn't quite work right there but uh if you know you can only just skip two three days at a time which whichever way but just keep skipping time and loading up on the camping kits until you have like 10 20 or as many as you can reasonably afford and as many as you can reasonably carry the only thing you want to watch out for is your your you not a pawn but you you don't want to be like very heavy or heavy just because convenience sake because we got to do a little bit of running and that's it. Just go ahead and stock up. Get at least 10 if you can, or as many as you can afford for the first run. So as I was doing, I see he restocks one a day, but that's still fine. Just skip days, buy him, skip days, buy him. I have all my pawns at heavy. They got three, four, and five. So a total of, what is that, 12 or 13 or whatever. And then I'm just going to not carry any for now. I could carry a couple myself, but whatever. So there's something we're going to do, but I'm going to show you a trick here that's going to make it even better. So you're going to head up from up the stairs from that guy. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but this is a really amazing shortcut for exactly what we're doing. You can get over to this aqueduct looking thing. So I'm going to open the map. We're right here on the map inside of town. And there's this aqueduct looking thing. You can get up on the wood right here. And then you can jump over to this to climb on this. And then get away from this. And then sprint at it and jump. And you can hopefully, if you're at the peak of this, make the height to get up here. There will actually be a seeker's token up here or something. Money, I think. It was money. And then you can actually follow the aqueduct to our destination. There's like a cave we need to farm for money. And this is the most convenient way to go to and from the cave. It's actually just the convenience is insane. But also right there is a Seeker's token. But yeah, you'll jump over these. Be careful not to fall on accident or you'll die. And there'll be a second one you jump over and then you just follow this. It'll lead to a cave. As you get to the end of the aqueduct, you'll notice a cave, which is exactly where we want to go. So inside of here, there's a bunch of different enemies and things. So we're going to head through here and you'll run into two different human enemies on your way down here there's the first one okay checking for money so the thing is humans are still i think it's a mid game now humans are still probably the best way to get money in the game they can drop a ton of money but they also drop potions and stuff that are worth over a hundred usually 
like the draws and things are worth 80 to 150 something like that now this is the farming spot there's also going to be these uh ores here watch out for the bats by the way they will attack you um so you're also going to gather ores here the ores respawn every i think 10 days so it's something we'll also be farming here but you're going to climb up here and there's a whole bunch of humans up here so you're going to kill all these guys there's some over here some over here now, how fast you kill them is going to depend on what weapons you have, what class you play, things like that. Uh, but just go ahead, run over here, and kill every humanoid that you see. So there's those ones. There's another 400 gold right there. You see they drop a bunch of money. Um, we got some up there. I think you already dropped. I think our guys are dealing with them right now. And then there's a few more over here. There's usually two or three over here. We're going to kill that one. Kill that one, and then there's one coming in over here usually. Okay, let's check if they dropped anything. The arrows is the worst thing they can possibly drop. Uh, potions are okay, but the best thing is when they just drop raw money. There's also um, this, which you can gather, you know, every, I think, 10 days or something like that. So there's another 250 gold. You can see they dropped just amazing gold. And then we're going to go over here. Try to find that last one that they killed real fast if I can. I think they're fighting them right around here somewhere. Uh, is this it? No, I don't know. There's random loot here too. Okay, now for the farm. So we got to clear it out like that first. Now we're good to go. So there is a camp right here. So now we are right here on the map in Headwater Cavern. And right here is a campsite. So what you're going to do is you're going to make camp. And we have, in my case, I have 12 mundane camping kits. Now, it'll get better. We'll get even more money later because we'll get cheaper camping kits, which I'll explain once we get done with how to farm this. But first, how to farm this. So what you'll do is you'll set up camp and you'll rest till either morning or nightfall. It doesn't really matter which one. I've started just doing nightfall just so I can press the button faster. And what happens is at night, you either get right through the night or you'll get ambushed by enemies. And one out of three times or so, you'll get ambushed by humans. The other times you get ambushed by goblins or wolves here. At least that's what it was when I tested at level like 15. I'm level 30 now coming back to this to make the video. Um, so at first, when you first get here, if you came in the way I did, you might not get any raids while trying to sleep at first because uh, of killing the enemies in the cave that we just came through. After the enemies respawn the first time, though, then we'll start getting raided a lot more because raids happen more often when there's enemies nearby that you haven't killed. And since we killed literally everything nearby, uh, even the bats, um, we're not going to get raided for the first few nights. But that's pretty normal. Once you get going on this, though, then uh, it gets a lot better. Let me skip ahead. We'll have to, oh, I just made camp while there's enemies right next to us. I don't even know what that's going to do. Okay. Well, let's see if there's enemies now after this one real fast. If not, I'll skip ahead to once there are. Once, you, once the first enemies happen, then it's pretty much every night you get raided. Uh, let's see if there's any enemies. Yeah, here we go. This is a raid. So this is what will happen. So now you just kill them as fast as you can. If you're coming back at a higher level, like I'm level 30 now, I just one-shot everything, basically. And the goblins, they drop things that are like, okay, they're they're okay money, right? It's all right. Uh, but the main thing you're after is uh, bandits. So the bandit enemies. Uh, let's see, there's an enemy. They haven't respawned yet. But the reason we farm here is because uh, you get the enemies that respawn, which is great, uh, like the raids, that is. But then also, once every so many rest cycles, all those humanoids that we just killed, they also respawn. And so the, the main thing we're after is farming these raids every night for their items and their money, but then also farming the humanoids, which looks like they just respawn finally. And between all that, you actually end up farming a crazy amount of money because of the double effect of getting um, both, you know, items from all these different things. So now you'll go back through and you'll look through for all the uh, bandits. We'll head up here and kill all these guys again. For some reason, there's more bandits up here than normally are. I'm not really sure what's up with that, but... Okay, I'll let that guy actually run up closer. And we'll look to see if they dropped anything. Oh my god, I can't pick anything up. Explosive arrow is the worst thing they could possibly drop. Wait, I've never had them all spawn up here like that before. But yeah, we're gonna go up here. Uh, there's more money. 
And uh, that was honestly extremely bad luck. Like only two out of six dropped items or something. But yeah, you're just going to keep farming like this. And uh, the money that you get is actually, in the long run, is actually really, really, really good. So I'm just going to keep farming this out and skip ahead. So I ran this for about 15 minutes. I think I broke four or something. I don't remember how many I had. I broke three to five of those camping kits or whatever. And just in raw gold, I'm up about 7,000 gold right now bef before the camping kits. Uh, as far as items go, I have a bunch more draughts, uh, more potions and things. I have these extra uh, spell books that are worth like 200 each. I also have all these, uh, these ores, which are worth um, like 100 to 200 something each. And then we have beast skin. We have 10 small fangs, which is like 500, 600 gold or something, plus goblin horns. And uh, it's a pretty good load right there. So if I sell all that, uh, that's probably going to be, uh, I don't know. I'll have to go check real fast. But the main thing is farm here until either you burn out or until you run out of camping kits. And then don't forget when you head back that you can take that aqueduct to just run straight back to town without having to run through any enemies or do anything like that. So just take a left of this cave, follow this, and it'll lead you right to the aqueduct. So now I'm back at this guy's shop, and I'm going to go ahead and sell everything I currently have on me that I got from that. So I have a lot of rotten meat, though, but oh well. Uh, dried fruit. I don't even know if I, I guess I looted that from these. Uh, I have these. I don't want to sell them, actually, so I'm going to keep them. Uh, sell fruit. Robert, sell one of these. It's worth 175. I'll sell the waking powders. There's another 300. And then the books are worth 200 each. Uh, the arrows are worth actually surprisingly an okay amount, but still not that great. Uh, and then another spell. And then we got the ores. Uh, and this one's worth 300, but I'm actually going to keep the gold one because it's kind of rare. Uh, bee skins worth 72. Small fang 72 says so 720 gold. 300 something gold 360 or something. 400 something goblin horns. And then uh, that was everything from that so that gets me to fourteen thousand gold but it i used up maybe three to four of those camping kits so that was like so i only used i think three of the camping kits but let's just say it's four on average for that same amount of of work because you're getting lucky use a seven maybe you get really lucky use like two or something um so i'm up like eight thousand gold from where i um set out from the point that i started from and that took about 20 minutes to get there and to come back and all that. So this realistically would get like 22 to 25, we'll say 25,000 gold per hour at the current rate. But there's something we can actually do to min-max this up to 30,000 gold per hour, which is really nice, actually. And some people might think that's not very good, but it's actually really good. I mean, I'll see comments where people say, well, just play the game normally and you'll make more money. And I'll tell you right now, you're not going to make more money playing the game normally per hour. But it would be smarter if you're you gonna just play the game and run around and do stuff and you'll get money. The money will come, so to speak, but it will absolutely be way slower than this per hour, at least if you time it. But anyway, uh, what we're going to do now is do a one time trip. So what you're going to do is do what I just I showed you until you have a bunch of money. So I have 14,000. Ideally, I would just do this for a full hour and I'd have like 40,000 gold or 30,000 gold. So yeah, ideally, you just have a ton of gold, like 30, 40,000, and then you do one pit stop to this ox cart right here. We already have it up right here. Uh, it's the ox cart on the northern side of Vernworth. And the first time you do this, you actually might get a quest for it and do a whole quest with it. But once you have this ox cart, you're gonna do a one-time trip to Melf. So you just sit down and board it and uh, just skip time and go over to Melf real fast. Once you get to Melf, you're gonna head over to this guy. So it's the runes apocrythary. This guy is the only real shopkeeper in this town. And what you're going to do is you're going to buy from him. And this guy sells the uh, modest camping kits. Now, these ones cost half as much. So what you can do is just buy three of these. And then right nearby, there is uh, um, an inn. And you can go over to the inn real fast. And right in front of the inn is a bench. And you sit on the bench, and you skip three days, and then buy more, and skip a few days, and buy more, and skip a few days, and buy more. And you just sit here for like 5 or 10, 20 minutes or something, and just fill up your storage in the inn with just an insane amount of these um, camping kits. That way, you never have to buy them again. You just go to your storage and pull out a bunch, and then go run to that goblin camp with these cheaper ones. Then after that, you're good to go. You just farm it whenever you want, once you have enough of those in storage, and you will make 30,000 gold per hour, which is... Still best way I've found to make gold so far, but I'll keep looking. I'm sure I'll find a better way in time. But for now, this is pretty good. It works early game and mid game. And like I said, even mid game, I struggle to find ones that are better than that. I think I got some ideas for mid game and I'll probably post about it tomorrow or the next day. 
uh, as soon as I get it ready and stuff, but uh, it won't be much better. It's going to be one of those things where it's like, this one's 30,000, and they'll be like, ooh, I found one that's like 40,000, maybe 50,000, but you got to be level 30 or 25, you know what I mean? So, uh, but this one's really good. Uh, if you just want to get another piece of gear or something, you know, you spend like 30 minutes real fast, and then you can go get some high-level piece of gear. Like one and a half hours of this, and you can get like the super super late game bow, like having my back or something like that. Uh, but if you do just want to, you just play the game normally and you slowly get money. But you'll probably, you know, matter how what you do, you'll average way less money per hour than this. Uh, but hopefully it helps you out, guys. There's another great way to farm gold. It also gets some, some okay XP at least early game, late game, mid game is not very good XP, but some good early game XP too. But now you know how to get thirty thousand gold per hour in Dragon's Dogma too.